I know it. I'm sorry. Hi there, it's David Gordon from Theater Mania. Hi, Bob Avian. Hi, David. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, to the people watching at home, this is uh, Bob Avian, ladies and gentlemen, one of the uh, the legendary Broadway choreographers. Oh, that's nice. Uh, he wrote a book that uh, came out, when did it come out? February? Yeah, the beginning of February. Yeah. Uh, it's a memoir called Dancing Man, a Broadway choreographer's journey. It's a great book. Oh, David, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for all the enjoyment that you brought me with just a chorus line and Miss Saigon alone, which are the two posters I see right over your shoulder there. Okay. Uh, tell me why you decided to write a book and how you came to how you came to write this to begin with. Well, I wanted to write a book uh, several years back, but. It was very difficult. I couldn't pull it together. Mm -hmm. And my my co-author is an old good friend of mine, and he's written quite a few books, and he was very anxious to try. And so he, along with my partner, Peter Pileski, we said, let's give it all a shot. But it took us a few years to do it because it was stop and go, stop and go, I had some spinal operations in the middle of it all, which slowed us down quite a bit. But yeah. eventually we finished it and uh, got it out there. Uh, I want to talk to you about your career. Okay. Uh, and I see two Tony Awards hanging, holding over your shoulder, Okay. Uh, which is just very cool. Tell me, what was the first Broadway show that you worked on as a performer? Uh, was West Side Story. I went in uh, as the Broadway original was going on tour and we did a very short tour and then came back to Broadway. So I did that all for more than a year. And then I did the international company, which was a European tour. And that's where I met Michael Bennett. Did you always want to be a, uh, a performer? Well, I didn't think of it when I was a kid, but I had this gift that I could dance. I didn't have training till I went off to college. And then I started ballet school. And uh, my teacher said, I want you to be in a ballet company. And I said, I want to dance on Broadway. <laughs> and that was always my ambition. What... Uh how did you and Michael come to work together? Well, it was the international tour of West Side Story. Yeah. We, we closed on Broadway and they organized the new cast. And uh, I was about 21, 22, and Michael was 17. He quit high school and joined this tour. And that's where we got very close and became best friends. He was like my kid brother. Tell me about that working relationship, uh, particularly when it came to a chorus line. Well, oh, okay. Well, we started working uh, soon after his career kicked off. And mm -hmm. we did television and some shows. And uh, and he, the first time he asked me to work for him, I thought it was a one show deal. Yeah. And he kept saying, well, the next job, we're going to do this. And the next job, we're going to do that. And I never knew that that's what was going to be happening. And uh, eventually, we did one show, then the next. And he wanted to do a show about dancers. And uh, so that got developed by those famous tape sessions. Yeah. And over a year, we took those tape sessions and turned it into a draft of chorus line. And uh, the rest is history. The rest is history. Uh, people watching at home, if you have questions for Bob, pop them in the comments. Uh, we'll scan them and get to them. Okay. Uh, when Bob, when you were uh, 
when you were working as a dancer on Broadway, you tell you tell a lot of great stories about the people that you've worked with, uh, both as a dancer and as a choreographer. People like okay. Catherine Hepper and people. I've read stories about you working with Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl. Right. Uh, tell me about like tell me about tell me a, a great story about Barbara Streisand. Well, she was amazing, and I went into the show a week after it opened as uh -huh. Swing Boy. I understudied every male in the singing and dancing chorus, the uh -huh. hardest job of my life. And uh, she was fantastic. The cast adored her. And she was a good girl. She showed up for every show. Sometimes she had to cut certain parts of it to get through it because she was doing her video specials recording her albums, but she always came in and did the show. Uh, tell me about interacting with her on stage. Did you ever, did you ever work with her in, like a, in that capacity? Well, my second night in the show, we were doing a sequence called Henry Street. Mm -hmm. And one by one, the, the guy dancers picked her up, twirled her in their arms and danced with her. So she wasn't warned that I was on that night. And it was my turn and I grabbed her and started twirling her and she went, oi, who are you? And I, I said, I'm the new boy. And, uh, and uh, it was great, she was great. Could you tell back then that she was gonna be uh, an international superstar? Yeah, she was from the get go. Uh, because she had a couple of major albums out. And the show sold because of her. Yeah. And when the curtain came down and we left the theater, you couldn't get out of the stage door. The street was packed. And it was something amazing. And with all the stars and, and famous figures who came just to see her. And uh, she was... She never missed the show. She was there all the time. She was a true star. I want to talk. I want to go back to a chorus line a bit, uh, and I want to talk about the recording sessions. I would assume you were present for all the recording sessions. Yeah, it was a one-day deal. Yeah, the old the old time way of doing it. Your day off in that famous church on Thirtieth Street that Columbia Records used to always use because it had the great vibration in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we would, did it all that one day. Did any, did your story, did you tell a story? I'm sorry, what did I? Did you tell a story during that session? Uh, no, not uh, really. No, we just recorded the score. Oh, no, I meant the, the original, the taping sessions, not the cast recording. Oh, oh! When, when when all the dancers were gathered, putting putting their stories on tape, yeah, for the musical. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, it all came to that. You know, yeah, it's all all the sc score and songs were built on some of those stories. Yeah, the casting session. What is it like to? Uh, so you and Bayork have since been the, the torchbearers of Chorus Line. Yeah, yeah. After Michael passed. And I've seen, I saw the 2006 revival. I never got to see the original production. Uh -huh. uh, I saw the production that they did at City Center. Oh, yeah. I was very happy with that one. That was great. Yeah, and the West End production, of course, which I know oh. you were very happy with. Oh, good, good. Uh, what is it like to reteach contemporary dancers the movement that is in a chorus line. Is it more difficult now than it was back then to get it working with the original cast? Not really. In fact, dancers are better trained nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh, the choreography is pretty classic. So yeah. they pick it up even faster and they come in so eager to learn it, you know. And we don't have to go through trial and error like we did with the original. Try right. this combination, try that one. No, throw that out. Let's do this instead. And so, no, new companies are very prepared. 
and yeah. very well trained. How much of the, is there a way to say, like, are there particular numbers in a chorus line that's like, oh, this is you versus, oh, this number is Michael, or is it just a pretty solid amalgamation of both of your work? It's, it's well, in the opening number, that's what the separation is. I did all the ballet stuff. Michael did all the jazz stuff. Yeah. But we were very fortunate. We both had a different technique. He was jazz and I was ballet. And so having those roots gave us a bigger vocabulary. And, you know, we didn't think ever who did what or who created what step. We just sort of took over from one another. Uh, we got a question from a viewer that I'm going to ask you. Uh, it's, I'm so curious about the creation of And I'm Telling You from Dream Girls. Did, did you all know right away that it was an iconic moment that would stand the test of time? And can you tell us any fun facts about creating that number? Well, that was a song that was written originally before we ever optioned the show. And when we first heard it, we heard Jennifer sing it. And we went, holy moly, this is amazing. And uh, it was quite a piece. And then building all the other recitatives around it was quite inspirational. But you had to have someone like Jennifer perform it because yeah. very few people can do that material. It is so demanding. Yeah. What, uh, what was the Dream Girls experience like for you? Thrilling. I love the show. Uh, I think Michael opted it because I was sort of pushing him. Uh -huh. I really loved it so much. It was one of my all time favorites. And it, it placed the black experience in such a beautiful, positive place. And it was about soul, it was about glamor, and it was a backstage musical. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know it was done recently in the West End, and I saw it recently. I saw it a couple years ago in London. Uh huh. The, the revival of it. Do you, why do you think it's such a hard show to do in New York? Well, it wasn't originally, of course. Right. But it's casting, you yeah. know. It's very difficult to cast. And uh, I think it's all my favorites. I don't know. I don't know if it's a hard show to do. It's, uh, the audiences loved it, and they kept coming. So I don't yeah. know. Um, I want to ask you a couple questions about Miss Saigon, which is one of my favorite shows. Ah, good for you, David. Yeah. Uh, how did you how did you come to be involved with the original production? Well, Cameron asked me to do it. I had I went over to London to do the London premiere of Follies. This was during Michael's illness, right. and, and then we lost him. But it was to be a new version, and it had a lot of new stuff in it. And uh, and Cameron McIntosh was overseeing it and wanted me to do it very much. So I was working on it and working on it. And one day he had me to his office and he said, I'm doing a new show called Miss Saigon and I want you to choreograph it. And I said, Cameron, you don't even know me yet. <laughs> I, said, I said, you don't know if I'll be happy with, you'll be happy with Follies and you haven't hired anybody else from Miss Saigon yet, and you want me to choreograph it? He said, yes, I know I want to. And that was the beginning of eight shows we did together. Tell he me was, about, go ahead. sorry, no, after you. He, he was so good to me, and he just kept hiring me show after show. But Miss Saigon was a very difficult, tricky experience. I was going to ask you to tell me about that and tell me about the kind of research that you did. Well, my two huge production numbers was one about communist takeover of a liberal country 
<laughs> the other one was about American capitalism. And I would sit home going, how do I handle this? How do I deal with this? And inch by inch, I came up with devices that would let me figure out the show. And at that time, I was not there for the original casting. Mm -hmm. And I was delivered a cast. So I had to work with what I had. And that somehow molded the style of the dancing for me as well. And, you know, we've done the show so many times now yeah. that every time I do it, I redo a lot of stuff depending on the company I have. And now I have acrobats all over the place and special effects. But uh, it was just based basically on what I did the first time. And I managed to conquer those two concepts and figure it out, which I was very proud of myself. I didn't know if I would be able to do that. Yeah, I was going to say some of the acrobats in the revival. Yes, uh, really. Thrilling. Yes. And just like spinning all over the place. It was crazy to watch. It was great. Well, each year they get better, you know, yeah. training. The all-time experience for me was when I went to Tokyo the first time to do Miss Saigon. And I said to the producers, I need acrobats. They brought in 10 Olympic acrobats. And I went, whoopee. You know, I didn't hire all them. I hired some of them. But wait, what they could do was astounding. So oh, I, went, I went out of my mind for a little while and used what they could do. Yeah. How, what was it like for you to put the revival together? Because I know you were involved with more of the casting for the revival than you were for the original. Yeah, uh, I loved it. We, here again, we wound up with a wonderful cast. It was fun being back in London again. Yeah. And doing it again. And the pressure is off. I don't have to conceive, come up or whatever. I just have to tailor uh, what they, who they were and what they were. And we were very fortunate with the cast. We discovered Ava Noblezada. Amazing. Yeah, she was singing in a high school choir from North Carolina when she came to audition. She was 18, never had done a big show. And here she is carrying the lead in the production. Just astounding. Yeah. And, and John John is my hero. Oh, John John. John John was in the original company. Yeah. We, we hired him with the Filipino cast that we brought from the Philippines as one of the ensemble members. And he's been with the show for 30 years, you know. And he's the nicest guy on the planet. Yeah. He's wonderful. And he was great in the uh, uh, television series Versace. He where, was. Where he played one of the villains. Yeah. It was, it was great. Yeah. He's a wonderful person. What was your favorite show to work on in your career? Do you have a favorite show? Well, definitely Dreamgirls was yeah. one of them. And Chorus Line, I guess. Yeah. Those those two and Miss Saigon. Yeah. Miss Saigon has been very good to me. And it's my anchor with Cameron McIntosh. You know, all things go back to that. Is there one show that you thought was better than what everybody said? Or was are there any shows that you thought didn't get the the notoriety that it deserved that you were on? Uh I can go back to Miss Saigon again on that. Uh -huh. we, we would get mixed reviews, and I would think to myself, what do they want? You know, <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. And somewhat on Sunset Boulevard, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty spectacular. And, of course, we had controversies with the leading lady. Right. And, and, but my heart wasn't where they were coming from. I love Patti LuPone. She was brilliant. And visually, the show was incredible. I didn't have many dance opportunities, 
my stuff was subtle. I had to do a lot of what they call musical staging, right? which people don't consider dancing, but it was a lot of work. And I never got bored with it. Every performance I'd look at it and I'd go, wow, this is something. You know? I really like that show. Yeah, I just the score of that show was brilliant. I think beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was a more temperamental set piece: the helicopter in Miss Saigon or the mansion in Sunset Boulevard? Oh, definitely the helicopter. <laughs> but I have a funny story. When we were teching the original production, it was going so slowly that we couldn't make things work. And that floating mansion that went up and down, uh -huh. it would move on its own without any cues being given. And we were like frightened to death. We didn't know what was going on. And one day they figured out that a certain cell phone, when you tried to make a call on it, it would set the trigger and the mansion would start moving. Get out of here. Yeah, and once we figured that out, everything was fine. <laughs> The idea that someone's cell phone could control the set is terrifying. <laughs> do you believe it? Well, it was already, you know, 20, yeah. 30 years ago. Who are, the, who are the dancers that you're that are like the future of dance for you? Who are the people that you've worked with? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's tricky. Because I look at a chorus line and I saw like Robin Herder. Oh. You, you, mirror and she is like tremendous she's brilliant she's yeah. one of the best and most of that cast melanie moore who played judy turner yeah tony yazbek yeah ryan Steele, uh, a, a company from a member from the revival called tyler haynes uh, and uh just so many great ones max yeah. Layton, very good yeah Will there ever be a Bob Avian review of shows like Jerome Robbins' Broadway? I doubt it. <laughs> I, my, my career is very mixed with other artists. Yeah. And very collaborative with other artists. Uh, someone wants you to talk about the creation of the music in the mirror. Okay. Chorus line, if you don't mind. Like, what went into the creation of that? Uh, well, of course, the first thing was to find the song. Yeah. And... The first song was sounded like we were gonna throw Donna into a volcano. It was uh, it was so over the top musically that we said, "Where do we go when we have to dance it?" Finally, Marvin Hamlish and Ed Cleveland came up with the right right material, and it was a number choreographed by Donna. And the, and the men dancers in the show. And in the middle section, she they came out and danced with her. And then we were sitting there one day watching a rehearsal and went, why do we need the guys? This is silly. Let's take them out. So, you know, it's, it's your usual classic story about starting a number, building on, building on it, sitting back and looking at it, and then getting out the blue pencil and going, we don't need that. We don't need this. We don't need that. It's about her. Yeah. And creating it on Donna was just wonderful. Yeah. What do you think Michael Bennett would think of the current world of both theater and entertainment, particularly in terms of dancers? Since you have so many like Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance, so many of these shows on now that are putting dancers in the spotlight. I think he would love it. I think he would love it. You know, it's giving him different colors to work with. You know, they are your palette. When you have dancers like you have today, you can go so much further as a choreographer on what you can do. There's no limit. Uh, someone is asking, Bob, can you briefly explain how you plan the musical staging of the scene? Do you do it on paper or through a workshop like on, on its feet? No, you do it in your head first. And you always figure out, step one, what is the story? How do I tell the story? How do I make it clearer? 
how do I give it more depth? Everything has to come from that. And if you work that way, you know, it's easier to find what you want to do. And then, of course, you take your liberties in terms of expressing those emotions. Dance is storytelling and emotion. Yeah. And that's what you hang on to. What do you say to like young people that are watching this that want to become a choreographer? Like, how do you become a choreographer? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I started out as a dancer. That's how it happened for me. And someone noticed that I could think, or I had a best friend who thought I had something to say and fed him. And he said, come on, work with me. And uh, that's how it goes. You have to have also an ambition in your soul. You have to know more than anything else in the world what you want to do and who you want to be. And that drives you. It, it, you don't really have anything to say about it. And work all you can. It doesn't matter. I became a stage manager. I did dance chorus. I did anything that got me into that door of a theater. And you always learn something and you always make connections. What was the most rewarding part of writing the book? Oh my God. I don't know. It took like three years, you know. <laughs> I think finishing it, <laughs> getting it done. Yeah. What, uh, I want to ask what, like, what your favorite story in the book is, because the book is filled with so many great stories about your career, about uh, the artists that you've worked with. Oh, let me think for a minute. Oh, I don't know the uh, the Mary Martin sequence. You know, I did three shows with her, uh -huh. and just to watch our friends develop, our friendship develop, and how I left performing because of her to become her stage manager on I Do, I Do. Uh -huh. And I thought I was doing the right thing. As I said, I went through that door. Yeah. And, uh, and then Michael said, no, forget that. Come work with me. And I decided I would. But working on two shows, Company and Follies, with Michael Bennett, to work in that lead with these kind of people, Stephen Sondheim, Hal Prince, Boris Aronson, Florence Klotz, and the team all the way around was like super A class. I'll bet. And hearing the discussions, I was privy to be in the room while these discussions were going on about conceiving and creating the show writing it and I pretty much kept my mouth shut <laughs> Michael would drag me along to these meetings and later I realized how lucky I was that he did but hearing these geniuses banter about these two productions and then when company finally started rehearsals I went I'd never seen anything like this before this is totally new for me. This is a kind of musical I have no concept of. And I could always watch it every time I was in the theater. And it changed history. It sure did. And it, it led to the next show, Follies. Excuse yeah. Me. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say, I believe you've answered all my questions. Oh, good. Yeah. Bob, thank you for your time. The book is really great. Oh, David, um, I appreciate that. It's such a delightful read, especially now when like theater doesn't exist. It's just fun to be in that world while we're dreaming for it to return. Yeah, we got to keep our fingers crossed, huh? Yeah. And make sure this all goes by quickly and get back to sitting in our house seats. Yeah. yeah. Bob, we be well. Take care. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much, David. It was Bye, wonderful. Pleasure. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye.